the cruise industry is the only industry that was completely shut down for such a long amount of time. But now uh, everybody, all of the players are about 2019 numbers. The industry grew quite significantly during the pandemic and there is pent up demand basically from every market around the world. So what is your most popular product? Depends how, if you're looking at popularity for the most aspirational or the biggest volume. Biggest volume will always be Mediterranean. I mean, we're here in the south of France today. Where's your chef? Where's yeah, your chef? It's not here today. She's close by. But, uh, you know, who wouldn't want to say all the men? So from a volume perspective, men is number one. But from an aspirational perspective, Antarctica is the destination that is seeing more and more growth, followed by the Galapagos. And within those... Uh, with, within those markets, the fighting ground is what? Because you can only do, how much luxury can you physically give somebody? <laughs> so to your point, the you luxury- can only drink, You can only sleep on so many threads of cotton. <laughs> Absolutely, Richard. The, in fact, uh, Silver Sea prides itself about destination leadership because the real point is offering these experiences money can't buy. So what we do on our ships, we will, you know, rent private islands in the Philippines just for the guests of the ship that they can go and have a party. We will organize in Halong Bay in the north of Vietnam a whole private dinner. Same on the Great Wall of China. So these kind of experiences money can't buy, that's really what drives the market. And that's fascinating because that is taking an experience, i.e. going on a cruise, and layering another experience upon it. And what we know from research is that the great fighting ground for um, uh, travel and tourism is experiential in the future. Would you agree? It's, 100%. You know, a, a, we've all got enough of everything. Yes. We don't need more of something. But not only, you're seeing a shift from durable goods to experiences. There is a shift in consumption, which is a huge trend. And we are profiting from the trend because if you think about it, because the ship moves, it allows access to these remote destinations. In terms of different parts of the world, now China hasn't yet picked up fully. We've seen the latest numbers, but China is not as important to you yet as the United States. For luxury cruising, it's not yet, to your point, but actually if you ask toward wealthy Chinese, which is the first bucket list destination, they will say Antarctica and they want to go with the best ship. They want to fly there. We are the only ones to operate, for example, a charter flight to Antarctica to avoid the Drake Passage. And that is a very expensive product that really is the flagship for wealthy Chinese. Growth comes with its challenges. And I think there's no greater challenge than environmental. Now, you will tell me that you are the most sustainable and your new ship that you're about to, to sail is the greenest, most sustainable in the world. I mean, I assume that's what you will tell me, but convincing people of this is different. Absolutely. Look, uh, sustainability in every industry is a journey. There is no magic wand that will, uh, from one day to the other, create, uh, you know, a completely emission-free ship. Royal Caribbean Group has been at the forefront of the investment, so we committed to a, a zero emission ship, you know, as first. Silver Nova, the ship that we are taking over on the 14th of August, she is the most sustainable ship in ultra luxury. In, for all of the features, starting from liquefied natural gas propulsion, which is the best transitional fuel you can have, for example. One place I need to go. What's the one? Antarctica. Yeah, or the other one we just launched this year, and this is on my bucket list, is actually Pond Inlet in the north of Greenland, Polar Bear County. It's so remote, it doesn't even have a commercial airport. And you're cruising, you're, you're sailing? We are sailing there, private charter plane, of course, because that's the only way to get there. And we promised the bear sighting. You promised the bears? We promised the bear. <laughs> Isn't that a bit like the ski resort that promises the snow? You know, yes. <laughs> keep everything cross. Yeah, absolutely.